Sports presents Major League Baseball. From Fenway Park in Boston, the Minnesota Twins versus the Boston Red Sox. Brought to you by Winston Filler Cigarettes. Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. By the new Gillette Super Stainless Steel Blade, The Spoiler. And by Chrysler Corporation, makers of Plymouth, Dodge, Chrysler, Imperial, and Dodge trucks. And the standings in the American League as we begin the last day of the season. Boston and Minnesota are tied for first. The Tigers are one half game out playing a doubleheader against the California Angels in Tiger Stadium this afternoon. Today, we'll decide it. Hi, everybody. This is Kurt Gowdy, along with Pee Wee Reese and Sandy Koufax. And today, Sunday makes a year. Never in the history of the American League have three teams gone to the last day of the season with a chance to win the pennant. And that's the way it is here today. Pee Wee, what do you think about it all? Kurt, I think it's wonderful, and I'm just happy that I can be a part of it. I don't know about the players being a little nervous, but old Pee Wee is just being up here. All right. Sandy Koufax. Kurt, it's a pitcher. This is the only day of the year where the bullpens are full. If you don't win today, you've got five months between your next start. This park was full an hour ago. Uh, they could have, uh, they've turned away thousands and thousands of fans here. Uh, you'll hear a roaring, of course, partisan New England crowd as the Twins of the Red Sox battle here. We'll be getting you up to date on what's happening in Detroit also. NBC's Major League Baseball will continue from Fenway Park in Boston as the Minnesota Twins battle the Boston Red Sox. Now let's go to Tiger Stadium in Detroit for an audio update from Tony Kubek. Howdy, here in Tiger Stadium in Detroit, lightning has already struck twice. Yesterday, you'll recall, in the first game of the doubleheader, Willie Horton hit a two-run home run in the first inning. He did just that again today, a two-run home run by Willie Horton to put the Tigers ahead two to nothing. Don Mincher hit a home run in the top of the second inning for the Angels off Joe Sparma. So right now, going to the Tigers' half of the second inning, it's Detroit 2, the Angels 1. And now back to Kurt Gowdy in Boston. Now the meeting here at home plate, thanks to Tony Kubek, will be switching back to Detroit throughout this game. The Tigers playing the first game of the doubleheader. The Tigers must win two today to tie the team that wins this game for the American League pennant. Here's the lineup for the visiting team, the Minnesota Twins. Zoliver Zeiss leading off at shortstop. Cesar Tovar's at third base. Armand Killebrew at first base, batting third. Tony Oliva's in right field, hitting cleanup. Bob Allison's in left field, batting number five. Ted Ulander's a center fielder, hitting sixth. Rod Carew at second base, batting seventh. Jerry Zimmerman's a catcher, hitting eighth. And Dean Chance will be pitching for the Twins. Chance has won 20 and lost 13. As Cal Irmer, 43, manager of the Twins with his back to you, Dick Williams, the manager of the Red Sox. The homestanding Red Sox, and they're taking the field now. This crowd has uh, fanatical here in New England with this miracle season. Gary Adair is at second, Dalton Jones at third, Harold Yastrzemski at left, Ken Harrelson at right field, George Scott at first, hitting fifth, Rico Petroselli, the shortstop, batting six. Reggie Smith, the center field, batting seven. Russ Gibson is the catcher, hitting eight. And Jim Lomborg, the Red Sox, 21-game winner with nine losses, carries the hopes of the Red Sox. Standing ovation for the Red Sox as they took the field. The umpires, Nestor Shylak behind the plate, Lou DeMiro at first, Ed Rungi at second, and Jim Honeychick at third. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
you saw was the Commissioner of Baseball, General Eckert, and uh, along in the box with him today is the United States Senator from Massachusetts, Edward Brooke. We had Vice President Humphreys and Senator Kennedy here yesterday. You saw the uh, flag over the anthem. A slight breeze today, not as windy as yesterday, blowing from third to first today. As we said yesterday, the wind in this ballpark probably has more effect in the game than any other ballpark in uh, the American League. The wind's out, they go for the short fence. If the wind's in, and it usually is a strong uh, wind off the Charles River here, it holds up balls hit, especially to right field. Jim Lomborg, a pre-med student in his junior year at Stanford, signed a bonus contract with the Red Sox. A 500 pitcher until this year when he suddenly blossomed into one of the best in baseball. He's 24 years old, born in Santa Maria, California. Lives now in San Luis Obispo, California. He has never beaten the Minnesota Ball Club. Dean Chance, <coughs> pardon me, has defeated the Red Sox more than any other team in his career in the American League. But uh, past history means nothing right now as we're about ready for the first pitch. And the batter is all over his eyes, hitting 201. Guys, the butt fouls it back. Rezaiz has six homers, 50 RBIs. And he still talks around the batting cage before every ball game. He can't understand what's happened to him with the bat. In 1965, the most valuable player in the American League. It's a high fly, shallow left center. Yastrzemski's coming on. Pepposelli's out. And Yastrzemski has it. One down. Cesar Tovar is up batting 268. And he is breaking an American League record today. He's playing in his 164th game. An all-time record in the American League. The Twins had two ties this year. The Major League record held by Maury Will who uh, has played in 165 games in one season when he was with the Dodgers. Lomborg, primarily a sinker ball pitcher. Ball one, he came up with a slider this year that uh, gave him an extra pitch along with a sinking fastball and a curve. And he says that's what put him over the top. There's his sinker, ball two, two and oh. The Twins have been tough for him. His record this year against Minnesota, no wins, three losses. His lifetime record against the Twins, no wins and six losses. Ground ball to Petroselli. Two down. Armin Killebrew is up now with two down, nobody on. Pee Wee talked to Killebrew before the game and asked him would he be trying to win the home run title today. Here's what he said. Well, actually, Pee Wee, if, if I can get a walk or a, or a single or get on with an air or something that will help win us this ball game, uh, I'll be happy. And I'm not going to be trying to, to win the home run championship, uh, actually. But if I can hit a home run, it'll help us with a game. That'll be all right, too. Killebrew takes ball one. Yastrzemski hit his 44th yesterday. Then Killebrew came up in the ninth and hit his 44th. So they're tied for home runs. Yastrzemski leads the league in batting and in RBIs. Two, two and nothing to kill a brew. They don't call him the killer for nothing. They have the shift on against him. Three infielders on the left side. The outfield deep and toward left. The 2-0 delivery. 3-0 and to him. He has hit four homers here this year. He's hit 30 lifetime homers here more than any other road park. And this is a ballpark that favors a batter like Killebrew. <coughs> the 3-0 delivery. He's on. Ball four. They're pitching carefully to him. Tony Oliva. Batting cleanup. Oliva batting 287. 17 homers, 83 RBIs. Sprays the ball all over. Left, center, right. The strategy is to jam him here with a long right field for him to shoot for. Don't pitch him outside and let him go to left with a short fence. And they're straight away. You can draw a string through home plate, second base, out to center fielder Reggie Smith. Two 
Two down, Killebrew getting his lead at first. Third ball. It's cool today. Pitcher should stay strong. The light uh, top coat feels comfortable in the stands. A one strike pitch. Strike two. Oliva's in a hole now with two down. Killebrew at first. No score. Top of the first inning. The end of two innings, the Tigers are leading the Angels 2-1. to one. Most of you know they split yesterday. The Angels blew a 6-2 to two lead in the second game in the eighth inning. They'd have won both those games yesterday. All they needed was a split today to assure a tie. Now they have to win two to tie the winner of this game. There's the drive to left field. That one is well up there and off the wall. They may wave Killebrew in. Reggie Smith has a powerful arm. Here's the throw. Scott's got it. Throws. Why? Coming over to third is Oliva. George Scott cut the ball off, and he had his man at the plate with a short throw, and as you saw, threw the ball over the head of the catcher, Russ Gibson. Killebrew, not a fast man, scored from first base. So the Twins take the lead, one to nothing. Here's the replay on it. And uh, Pee Wee will pick it up and show you how the cutoff man, Scott, came over. Well, you can see Yostremski straight right with the ball. He thought he may have a chance. They hit about three feet above Yostremski. Reggie Smith, as Kurt said, has a very strong arm. And looks to me like he made a good throw. George Scott, the first baseman, came over, cut the ball off, and had the runner in plenty of time. Now, here's Killebrew coming all along. See, he started to hold up a little bit. And Billy Martin, the coach, gave him the go-ahead sign, a bad throw, good throw would have had him. All right, Bob Ellison's up. Gibson saving that one. Give Tony Oliva a double. Charge George Scott with an error for his overthrow at home. No RBI. The official score figure that Killebrew would not have scored with a good throw from Scott. Oliva on third, two down. Ellison takes a breaking pitch over. One ball, one strike. Ellison batting 258. He's had a comeback season. After two mediocre years, he's hitting uh, 24 homers this year, 75 RBIs. Playing him as a pull hitter to left field. Two and one. If you've ever seen two bullpens jam today, fans, you're going to take a look at it. They have everybody out there they can get jammed in those bullpens. Two and one to Bob Allison. Goes after a long board slider to make it two and two. Lombard's had trouble in this ballpark, his home park this year. He's won eight and lost five here on the road. He's won 13 and lost four. And this is a tough park to pitch in. The 2-2 two -two delivery. Foul back. Heard as you were talking, uh, Lombard made two real good pitches to uh, Oliva with two curveballs breaking in on him. And it uh, looks like he tried to sneak that fastball by him on the outside. He just wrapped that ball off of that green monster fence. Two and two to Bob Ellison. Oliva third, two down. Got a little high. Three and two now. A left-handed batter, Ted Ulanders on deck. Two pitch coming up. There's a fly ball hit out to Yastrzemski in the warning path in the side side. One run, one hit, one error, one left. In the middle of the first inning, it's the Twins one and the Red Sox coming to bat. It's what's up front that counts. ahead of the filter. Only Winston has the good, good taste. That comes from filter blend. 
Yes, it's Winston's Golden Filter Blend Tobaccos that make Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston! And now for you menthol smokers. Winston comes up with a fresh idea. A Winston menthol in the Super King size. An extra long cigarette. And it's the best tasting yet. What a taste. What a combo. Winston and menthol. And in the Super King size. Try new Winston menthol in the tall green and gold pack. 26-year-old Dean Chance, a farm boy from Worcester, Ohio, carries the Twins' hopes. Chance has won 20, lost 13. He has been tough against the Red Sox. He's beat, beaten the Red Sox this year four times against one loss. And his lifetime record against Boston, combined with California and Minnesota, is 16 and 8. He has more lifetime wins against the Red Sox than against any other team in the league. Jerry Adair leading off of the Red Sox, batting 263. Three homers, 37 RBIs. Well, the Twins scored in the first inning yesterday, had a 1-0 lead. They had the bases loaded, one out, couldn't get any more, and that hurt them. A ball. Chance throws hard, has a good slider, breaking pitch. You watch him, his motion is deceiving. He's hard to pick up the ball against. A lot of times he's looking up in the sky. It looks like uh, he's not watching the plate. As Sandy will tell you, most good pitchers have their eye right on the target. This fellow has anything but. Kurt, he has, Dean has a little bit of a different windup uh, than most pitchers. He doesn't quite look at the plate, as you said. And it looks like he doesn't use his body at all. It looks like his body's going one way and his arm another. You see there, he doesn't have much of a follow-through, and you know you sometimes wonder how Dean's got away without ever hurting his arm. Adair, Jones, Jastrzemski, first three men up for the Red Sox. The count to Jerry Adair, one and one. He's hit 290 since he came to the Red Sox in a trade from Chicago. And he's filled in at short, second, and third. Today they have him at second. A one-one pitch. They say never change your lineup while you're winning. The Red Sox won yesterday, but Dick Williams changed it today. He took Mike Andrews out, put a Derek second, put Dalton Jones in at third. Williams is a hunch manager. Ground ball to Brzezai. He'll have a long throw from the grass. It's there. Brzezai has a very strong throwing arm. And that's the play when they scout a shortstop. That's what they look for, that arm from the deep hole. Yes, it is, Kurt, and that's a real tough play. You can see Versailles, he made the play right. He braced that right foot, and that's the way you get something on the ball. That's one of the toughest plays that a shortstop has to make. Here's a good little hitter, Dalton Jones, who's had trouble in the field. Batting 284. Strike in his last uh, 31 times at bat here in this stretch drive. He's hitting 419 for the Red Sox. Two games on their recent road trip. He had four hits in one game against the Tigers and four hits in another game against the Orioles. He's always swung a good bat. They've had trouble finding a place for him to play. The one strike pitch. Line drive. Up goes Brock Carew to take a base hit away from him. Well, that's two down. Rod Carew, the brilliant rookie second baseman of the Twins. Well, here's the fellow that's had about as great as year the ball player can ever have. Carl Yastrzemski leads the league in batting, hitting 322. Leads the league in RBIs, 119. Tied for the lead in homers with 44. The best defensive left fielder in the game. Great arm. He's done it all. And he's hitting his best right now. He has a eight-game batting streak going at the close of the season. The strike. Ian Killebrew tied for homers. We went in to talk to Carl about a uh, quarter of one here. He was taking a nap. <laughs> went in the equipment man's room and went to sleep. Off chances, glove. He's on. Remsky on first, two down. 
cleanup is Ken Harrelson. Hitting 258. 12 homers for the year. Combined with the Red Sox and the A's. 52 RBI. Since Tony Canigliaro injured his eye and has been out about six weeks, they've had trouble in his cleanup position. They hit George Scott. They're now dropped into number five. Spensky has stolen nine bases this year. One to nothing, Minnesota leading, last of the first inning. Fans keep him in close. Time call, no pitch. are leading the Angels 2-1. to one. The Angels are batting in the top of the third. Sparma against Wright. Willie Horton homered in the first one on for the Tigers. Don Mincher for the uh, Angels in the second. Nobody on. There's a bounding ball. Carew flashing to his left. Makes the play. Two good plays by Carew in that last of the first inning. And the Red Sox are all out. They had no runs, one hit, there were no errors, and one man left. At the end of the first inning, the score is the Twins won and the Red Sox nothing. Put a Tiger Stadium in Detroit for an audio update from Tony Kubek. Thank you, Kurt Gowdy. The score still is 2-1 to one in favor of the Detroit Tigers here with the Tigers at bat in the last of the third. Joe Sparmer was in deep trouble in the top of the third inning when he loaded the bases due to his own error to put Hall on. But then, a great play by Eddie Matthews at first base forced the runner at home plate, and then Rick Reichert hit into a higher double play, Dick Trzewski around the horn over to Matthews to end the inning. So the score is now 2-1 to one in favor of the Tigers, and now back to Kurt Gowdy in Boston. Thank you, Tony. Ted Ulander has taken strike one. There's a ball to him, one and one. Ulander, Carew, and Zimmerman for the Twins here in the top of the second. Twins are ahead one to nothing. Ulander. Made a stretch drive with a bat, bringing his average up about 30 points. He's hitting 258. Ball two, two and one. He has six homers, 49 RBIs. The 2 1 delivery. Foul out of play. Two and two. Gentleman Jim, they call uh, Lomborg around here. Very quiet boy, studious. Good student at Stanford. Ball three, three and two, sharp dresser. Hugh Lander lives in McAllen, Texas. Three and two. Foul out of play. The Red Sox have already broken their all-time attendance record. There are the bullpens. Look at them. You've never seen so many pitchers. That's the Red Sox bullpen. And the Twins bullpen out in the right field area. Fly ball. Yastrzemski almost in his tracks waiting. That's his third foot out of the game. Rod Carew hoping to celebrate his birthday today with a Minnesota pennant. He's 22 years old. Today, he's hitting 294. He's hit right around that 300 clip all year long from the opening week when he got off to a good start. Eight homers, 51 RBIs. He was born in Panama. Lives now in Brooklyn, New York. His fourth pro season, he's been an all-star in every league he's played in. The strike. Minnesota leading Boston, one to nothing in the top of the second. 
Detroit leading California 2-1, last of the third, the first game of their doubleheader. Strike two. The Tigers have just scored another run. They're leading now 3-1, and they're still batting in the last of the third. Two strike pitch. One and two to Rod Carew. You watch Lonborg uh, carefully. If you see him up high now with his fastball or slider, he gets in trouble, like most sinker ball pitchers when they get up above the belt. He's got to stay down low. A one-two pitch. Grounded down to George Scott. Makes the play to Lomborg, and they're two down. Jerry Zimmerman who originally was signed by the Red Sox for an $85,000 bonus. That was back in 1952. And here he is, battling against the club that originally signed him. Two down, nobody on. He hits it back to the box. Petroselli in back of the bag up with it. Throws him out. Middle of the second to score, the Twins won and the Red Sox nothing. George Scott leading off for the Red Sox. We asked George before the game how he rated Dean Chance with some of the other pitchers in the American League. Well, Kobe, uh, I think Dean Chance is one of the toughest right hand in baseball and for this leg, uh, I think he's uh, tougher than this leg. And uh, he gives me a whole lot of trouble. Uh, I hit against him something like about 12 times this year, and I, I think I must have got about four or four base hits. He's real tough. George Scott batting 305. He's going to wind up this year as a 300 hitter. 19 homers, 81 RBIs. A little pop-up. Arm Killebrew one-handing it for the out. And Scott plays that first base in unbelievable fashion. This game is authorized under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use to the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Rico Petroselli, batting 259. All one voted as the most underrated player in the Red Sox this year. Has 17 homers. 65 RBIs and has been brilliant in the field. Playing him as a pull hitter to left. That ball is hit through the middle of center field for a base hit. Petroselli's on. The Red Sox lead the American League in batting and home runs and runs scored. They've been a good hitting team all year. Another Red Sox rookie, Reggie Smith, hitting 251, 15 homers, 61 RBI. The batting champ of the International League last year. He's only 22 years old. He's from Los Angeles. Very young Red Sox team. Squibs a foul for a strike. Winner of this game clinches at least a tie for the pennant. The loser's gone. If the Tigers lose one today of their uh, two scheduled games, the winner of this game is the winner. A fly ball, tough chance down the left field line, and this one is a foul ball. Just foul. Now, where those uh, stands extend, vision is blocked out here and fans sitting behind the plate down the third base side and the left field side their vision is blocked out but umpire honey chick at third umpire shylack behind the plate we're right down the line and both call it foul bob allison edged a little more toward the left field line than left field Dean Chance has Reggie Smith, two strikes. One out, Petroselli's at first. The Twins are ahead, one to nothing. 
struck him out on a curveball. First strikeout for Chance. Two down, Russ Gibson up. Gibson from Fall River, Massachusetts, batting 207. One homer, 14 RBIs. He spent 10 seasons in the minor leagues before coming up this year. Killebrew holding against Petroselli. There's a fly ball down the right field line. Oliva's over there in the corner for it. And that's all for the uh, Red Sox in the last of the second. They had no runs, one hit, there were no errors, and one man left. At the end of the second inning, the score is the Twins won, and the Red Sox nothing. Let's go to Tiger Stadium in Detroit. An audio update from Tony Kubek. Well, Kurt, in the last half of the third inning here in Detroit, they scored three runs after two were out. Willie Horton lofted a high fly ball to left center field that Rick Reichert and Roger Repos got their signals messed up on. The ball dropped between them, then an intentional pass to freehand, a single by Worth, and a key two-run single by Eddie Matthews. So now the score is 5-1 to one in the last of the third. And now back to Kurt Gowdy in Boston. Thank you, Tony. We'll be coming back to you and Jim Simpson throughout the game here. Dean Chance leading off for the Twins. A strike to him, one of the best pitchers in the game and one of the worst hitting pitchers. He's had three hits and 90 times up this year. Those 90 times up, he has struck out 50 sometimes. Strike two. See what we mean? Kurt, I don't know. Uh, Dean was never a good hitter, but when he put on my old number instead of his number 31 when they had with the Angels. It looks like it became worse. <laughs> two strikes to him. All one. One and two. Zoliver's eyes is on deck at the top of the order and then Cesar Tobar. He just changed his stance right away the uh, line ball getting ready to pitch the ball there. He's going to trick him. A little strategy. <laughs> A one-two pitch. And he's out. Strike out for the pitcher, a put out for the catcher as he tries to bunt on the third strike. And that's the first strike out for Lombard. Now we go to the top of the Twins order and pick up Brzez, who flied to left his first time. He's batting 201. Play him just a step or two toward left. One to nothing, the Twins ahead. Pops it up. They have room. Dalton Jones and Petroselli. It's Petroselli on the ground. Two down. Jonesy was doing the leaning tower pizza job on that one. <laughs> Tovar grounded out his first time. He's played six positions this year for the Twins. Been voted their most valuable player by his teammates. Hitting 268. A ball. Lomborg, by the way, leads the majors in hitting uh, batters this year. His stuff sometimes runs into a right-hander. A 1-0 pitch. All 2-2-0 two, two and oh to Tobar. Lomborg has hit 19 batters. Tops in the majors. The Red Sox record is hitting 20 batters. That was done by Howard Emke back in 23. Well, for a lot of the old timers remember Howard Emke when Connie Mack started him in the World Series. As a surprise starter, as I remember, he struck out 13, 14 men against the Cubs. All four. Tovar's on. Second walk given up by Lomborg, and here's Killebrew up. He walked his first time. Killebrew batting 266. Minnesota has one run, one hit. Boston has no runs, two hits. Red Sox made an error that led to the Twins' run. Tovar has stolen 19 bases. He's a good base runner. And he gets back. Close play. They don't have a shift on now with a man on first, but Jerry Adair, the second baseman, is almost in back of the bag. The outfield swung way around toward left. This 
is the third inning. The Red Sox are trailing Minnesota one to nothing. A ball, low slider, one to nothing. Lomborg will probably try and pitch outside to Killebrew, keep it away from his power here with a short uh, left field fence. it into left field. Yastrzemski lets the ball go through his legs. You got a fast man, Tovar, coming on. He's rounding third. He'll be in the score. And the Twins have a two to nothing lead. And Killebrew winds up at second. An error charged to Yastrzemski. Killebrew gets a single. No RBI. And the usual reliable Yastrzemski let that ball go through him. And twice now, the Red Sox have made errors in the field, which has allowed runners to score from first base after two out. And the Twins are ahead two to nothing. Oliva double off the wall in the first inning. Hitting 288. They're going to put him on. And pitch to the right-hander, Bob Allison. <laughs> Ball two to Tony Oliva. Bob Rogers has homered for the Angels in the fourth inning at Tiger Stadium. It is now five to two in favor of the Tigers. Well, if the Tigers win uh, the first game, They'll be going into that second game with a chance to tie the winner of this game for the pennant. I wonder who they'll pitch out there in that second game, Pee Wee. Well, I heard that they would probably pitch a Denny McLean, and someone, Kurt, was telling us during the season that if they had to win one game, the Detroit Ball Club, they'd like to see Denny McLean pitch it. Well, he may get that opportunity in the second game today. Rick Clark is scheduled to go for the Angels. Strike one to Bob Allison, who flied out to left field his first time. Killebrew's at second, Oliva's at first. There are two outs, one run in for the Twins in the top of the third. And now Lomborg's ahead of him, 0-2. were turned on in the first inning here. Right now the sun is coming through also. Alice in the batter. Two strikes on him. Two down. Runners on first and second. Struck him out on three. Well, the strategy paid off. One run for Minnesota. One hit. One Red Sox there. The Twins left two. In the middle of the third, it's Minnesota two and Boston nothing. The Twins have at least one fan in Michigan today, 11-year-old boy named David Bruce, who used to live in Minneapolis, pulling hard for them from his home in Battle Creek, Michigan. We want to send him our best. Commissioner Eckert. That's his publicity aide there, Joe Reichler with him, and Senator Edward Brooke of the Commonwealth. And here's Jim Lomborg leading off for the Red Sox. Last of the third inning. Dean Chance on the mound for the Twins. Strike the Lomborg. Lomborg batting 126. He's won a couple of games for himself with his bat, though. There's a little pop on a check swing, and that one's in. Lombard loops it into right. This Sox had a couple of hits like that yesterday. Top of the order coming up, Jerry Adair grounded out in the first inning. Bobby Doyle 
Lombard, the first base coach, wants to... Uh, Lombard wants something. I think he wants his cap brought out. I think he's batting helmet off. Uh, I think the Minnesota dugout's trying to get uh, Killebrew to play behind the runner, Kurt. To step off the bag. Now there's Cal Ermer. Minnesota manager. No manager's ever taken over midway of the season and won a pennant. Sam Mealy started the year. He was released by the Twins, and Ermer came up to take the club over. Ground ball, perfect double play ball to Carew. One Versailles to first for the double play. Taylor May all the way. Carew to Versailles to Killebrew. Two down for the Red Sox. Nobody on. And Dalton Jones up. He lined out his first time. Batting 282. Jones from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Nespremski on deck. Minnesota ahead. Two to nothing last of the third. There the ball hits sharply to Carew. He stabs it with a sure pair of hands. Throws him out. And that's it. Twice Jones has hit the ball hard now to second base. No base hits to show though. No runs. One hit. There were no errors. Nobody left. At the end of the third inning, Minnesota two and Boston nothing. Thank you. See sports schedule, both coming up the first two weeks of November. On November 4th and 5th, the Hawaiian Open, live and in color from Honolulu. The first live color sports event ever telecast by satellite from Hawaii. And then on November 11th, from Washington, D.C., the international horse race from Laurel, Maryland best foreign horses in the world against the United States thoroughbreds. Ted Ulander fouls it off strike one. Ulander fly to left his first time. Batting 257. The Twins have two runs, two hits. The Red Sox no runs, three hits. The Red Sox have made two costly errors. Trying to bunny his way on. Strike two. Rod Carew's on deck and then Jerry Zimmerman. Strike pitch. A little bit high. One and two. One, two pitch. Outside, two and two. Nobody on, nobody out. Twins batting in the top of the fourth. Foul back. Remember the World Series will be seen on NBC television, heard on NBC radio. Jim Lemon coaching at first for the Twins. Billy Martin at third. A couple of former American League stars. There's a high fly ball to deep right field. Harrelson has room. Smith there calls him off and makes the draft. Showed you this is no easy ballpark for a left-handed batter here. That ball hit a long ways, about 390, but it was an out. It's different to left field. Long right field here. Rod Carew grounded out his first time. Batting 294. Jerry Zimmerman on deck. Straight away for Carew. In there for a strike is Jim Lombard. Lombard leads the American League in strikeouts. Ball and strike. He has struck out two so far. He now has 243 strikeouts. Jim Bunning leads the National League. He has 243. One-one pitch. Pacelli up with it beautifully. The throw in time. He's got it. Rico Petroselli taking a base hit away from Rod Carew. Two down for the Twins. And Jerry Zimmerman up. He grounded out his first time. 
The Twins are ahead. Two to nothing in the fourth. The ball talking about Bunning. Bunning is due to pitch today in San Francisco. Bills will close their season out there. And Bunning, of course, with some strikeouts today, can win the strikeout leadership of the majors. Bounding ball to Petroselli again. And that's it for the Twins. They're all gone in the fourth. Three up, three down in the middle of the fourth to score. The Twins two and the Red Sox nothing. Your new... Well, if you don't think this fellow's had some kind of year, Carl Yastrzemski leads the American League in runs scored and base hits in RBIs. He's tied for home runs. He leads the league in total bases, batting percent, and slugging percent. He leads the Red Sox in 11 offensive departments. And leads the American League in seven offensive departments. He singled his first time up. He's now batting 323. He's on his way to his second American League batting championship. Ken Harrelson on deck and then George Scott. Dean Chance. Foul off, strike one. fans who have never seen Yastrzemski play before across the country, he takes one of the most vicious cuts in baseball. He won his first American League batting title in 1963 when he hit 321. There's his leadership in RBIs over the closest man, Killebrew. in the second, and Yastrzemski's got a double. <laughs> Yesterday, that would have been a home run with the wind blowing out. Today, the wind is blowing from third to first and held them all up. That's the way he used to hit, to the opposite field about 75% of the time. And that's where the left field bench used to help him. But this year, he's turned into a full hitter. Bobby Doerr coaching at first for the Red Sox. Ed Kowalski at third. Ken Harrelson the batter. Harrelson grounded out his first time. The Red Sox now have out hit the Twins 4-2. to two. The Twins are ahead 2 to nothing. A ball to Harrelson. Out at Tiger Stadium, the Angels failed to score in the fifth inning. The Tigers lead the Angels 5-2. to two. Tigers batting last to the fifth first game of their doubleheader. High fly to right field. Yastrzemski is tagging. Oliva with a grab. Yastrzemski is not coming. The throw is to Verzai's the shortstop. One away. Red Sox two runs behind, playing it safe. George Scott's up now. He popped up his first time. In football, Miami Dolphins, New York Jets, no score. The end of the first quarter. In the NFL, the Steelers and Eagles, 7-7 at the end of the first quarter. Baltimore leads the 49ers, 10-0 into the first quarter. Green Bay over Atlanta, 7-0 into the first quarter. And the surprising Detroit Lions lead the Cardinals 14 to nothing into the first quarter. The Tigers just scored another run in their fifth inning. They lead the Angels 6 to 2 now in the fifth. A ball to Scott, and the Tigers are still batting. We'll keep repeating the circumstance. If the Tigers win two games today, they will tie the winner of this game for the pennant. The Tigers split today 
or you yeah, lose one, that's all they have to do. They're out of it, and the winner of this game is the American League pennant winner. Two and nothing to George Scott. Dean Chance didn't like that call. And we'll repeat again, never in the history of the American League have three teams gone to the last day of the season with a chance to win the pennant. The 2-0 pitch. Oh, he hit one yesterday, a line drive way up in the center field bleachers. 2-1 to Scott. Batting 3-0-4. Yastrzemski at second, one out. Pet Baselli's on deck. 2-1 delivery. 3-1 now. control so far, but now he's behind Scott. Three one pitch. Foul back and we go to three and two on George Scott. Kremski at second, one away. Ball hit the chance, throws to Verzai's double play. Chance just caught that ball in the webbing of his glove. Watch this one. Dean Chance. Yeah, just Kremski get a base hit off his glove in the first inning, but he held onto that liner. That was ticketed back to the box in the center field. Might have scored Jastrzemski. So the Red Sox, no runs, one hit. There were no errors. Nobody left. And in the end of the fourth inning here at Fenway Park, Twins two and Red Sox nothing. We're going now to the fifth inning. Dean Chance took a strike. And to carry you along here with play-by-play, Pee Wee Reese. Okay, Mr. Gowling, here's Dean Chance. Uh, there'll be a replay on that last line drive. You can see it was a bang-bang job, and the shortstop cutting right in back of Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski, evidently, of course, he did think that the ball was through there. And Dean Chance, after making that fine play, is the first hitter. And this may be one of the world's worst-looking hitters. Watch this. <laughs> Got an eye like an eagle. Two and two is the count on Dean Chance. The Twins lead in this ball game by a score of two to nothing. They scored one in the first and one in the third. This is the day. As Dean Chance bails out of that left foot a little bit, Lonbar gets his third strikeout. Lonbar has pitched well enough for this game to be tied because the two runs that they scored were both on arrows. Versailles batting an even 200. Today he fired out to left field and popped up to the shortstop. The catcher Gibson giving the signs. Moves a little outside with the target. Too far outside the Lombard. Dick Williams, the manager for the Red Sox. And there he's pitching coach. The great pitcher for the Giants and the Dodgers. Sal Magley. And he told me something yesterday. 
There's quite a tribute to the left fielder, Carl Yastrzemski. Boy, Versailles had a good swing at that one. Saying that he had been around baseball for a long time and seen a lot of baseball players, but this is the greatest year by a ball player he's ever seen, Carl Yastrzemski, in every phase of the game. And that's quite a compliment because Magley does not have too much to say as a rule. Not too many compliments. <laughs> Jim Lombard, a count of two and two on the little shortstop for Saez. Just missed with the curveball. He'll be followed by Cesar Tovar, who walked his last time up. There's a good shot of the catcher. Little tap out to the shortstop. Petroselli's had a busy day. He flips the ball over to George Scott. Let's pause now for station identification. KNBC Channel 4, Los Angeles. Cesar Tobar. Two up and two down here in the top half of the fifth inning with the Red Sox trailing this game by a score of two to nothing. Detroit leads California by a score of six to two after five Detroit must win both games to get in a playoff in this American League if they split the winner of this game wins the American League pennant race one ball one strike on Tovar this fella has played everywhere Ball hit to Dalton Jones at third. The flip over to George Scott, and that's all for Tovar, and that's all for the Twins here in the top half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. And the score, after four and a half innings of play, it's still Minnesota two, the Red Sox nothing. Now let's go to Tiger Stadium in Detroit for an audio update from Jim Simpson. Come on in, Jim. All right, Pee Wee, and thank you very much. The Tigers have added a run in the last of the fifth. Kaline let off with a single, but overran first base and was thrown out. Willie Horton came back with a double. Freehand singled him home. Horton has now scored three runs, and Freehand has driven in a couple, as has Willie. Score now with two out in the Angels' sixth is California two, but Detroit six. Now back to you, Pee Wee, in Boston. Thank you, Jim. The first hitter here at Fenway Park, Rico Petroselli, the shortstop. He's one for one today, and he's had a busy day in the field. Made some fine plays. There's a ball popped up out into center field. Ted Ulander couldn't pick it up right away. Comes in and takes it. They tell me that at this time of the year, and Kurt probably knows this because he did the games here for 15 years, latter part of September, the first of October, that's a real bad sun field. In fact, the sun even gives the second baseman a little trouble. That's it, Pee Wee, and it comes right over the uh, the rim of Fenway Park here, which is not a high park, but uh, it's murderous out there in center and right. Reggie Smith. He struck out his only time up today. Of course, they don't worry about the shadows here too much. The stands aren't that high like they are in Yankee Stadium and... Some of these other stadiums around. Dean Chance has been hit hard a couple times a day, but right at someone. He jammed Reggie Smith. Tovar, the third baseman, takes it in foul territory. Chance is a type of pitcher. That good fastball of his. Tries to keep it in on the right-handed hitters and throw that slider out over the plate. Lee Stang warming up for the Red Sox. The eighth place hitter. Russ Gibson, the catcher. Curveball by Dean Chance gets the outside corner, strike one. We have two away. And the Red Sox trail by a score of two to nothing. Outside, one and one. Both Scott, George Scott, Ken Harrelson talking about chance. If he keeps that slider on the outside part of that plate, you try to pull him, 
you're in trouble. You have to go back through the middle in the right field with him. It's a good shot of the crowd here today, and they've had this stands filled many times. Someone figured, Pee Wee, that they've drawn 70% of the capacity all season, which uh, is almost unheard of. You can see Dean Chance walk over that mound. He thought he had him. Gibson started. He checked his swing. Mr. Lester Shylock, the umpire, said no, he didn't go around on it. Two and two is the count on Russ Gibson. He got him on that one. And that's all for the Red Sox here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. The score after five full innings. Minnesota still two and the Boston Red Sox nothing. Five and a half. The 19th. Let's pause now for station identification. Western excitement on the high chaparral tonight at 10, 9 central time. Union Oil 76 jackpot is back, bigger than ever. Play 76 jumbo jackpot. Win up to $5,000 over 360,000 cash prizes. Pick up a 76 jumbo jackpot ticket every time you see your participating Union Oil dealer. Win up to $5,000. Extraordinary Western Airlines, the only way to fly. Top half the sixth inning. The Twins lead in this game by a score of two to nothing. They only have two hits off this fella, Jim Lonborg, and there's the big fella right there that has one of them. He's been instrumental in both runs. He walked in the first inning. He scored a run on an error by George Scott, who had cut off the throw from Reggie Smith, and he tossed it over Gibson's head. Then in the third inning, Caleb Rue got a base hit. Killebrew, first pitch to him, outside. They'll be careful with him. They will not try to give him a good pitch to hit. Trying to keep the ball away from him. Two and O's a count on Harmon Killebrew leading things off here for the Twins in the top half of the sixth inning. Now let's see what he does. He may get the hit sign from Billy Martin coaching at third base. There's Billy. You can see something he's doing there is the sign. May be backing up right now. He looked like he was ready to cut down on that three and O pitch. It was high and inside, and that's the fourth walk given up by Lombard. Tony Oliva. What's he done? He doubled in the first inning. And he walked his last time up. That's the 131st base on ball for Killebrew. He leads the league. Lee Stang still throwing in the bullpen for the Red Sox. Lundborg shakes his head, says that's not the pitch he wants. As we talked about yesterday, Oliva, there's Lee Stang, little right-hander. Oliva is quite a long way away from that plate, as you'll notice when he goes back up there but they still try to pitch him inside. You get that ball out over that play, which he looks like he can't reach. That's the ball he lines in the left field, as he did in the first inning off the scoreboard. 
she has to lean over to reach the outside part of that plate. It's way outside. B, we have a situation right now in this ballpark. Yesterday they were roaring in every pitch. The Red Sox uh, tied early and then went ahead. Right now this ballpark's like a morgue with the Red Sox trailing by two runs. Of course, they'll come alive, but it's very quiet here compared to yesterday. In there for call strike two. Oliva looking at Nestor Shylock like he couldn't believe it. Yes, sir, Kurt, they really did. The fans here yesterday, they had some life. Of course, they had a little bit more to cheer about. They're only in the sixth inning, though. That pitch is high and outside. Makes the count two and two. There's no one away. Harmon Killebrew on at first base. Lonbarg all the way for the Red Sox. Dean Chance all the way for the Twins. Just got the outside corner. Caught him looking. That's the fourth strikeout. By Big Jim. Gentleman Jim. Brings up Bob Allison. And he was one of the strikeouts. His last time up. Bob batting 257. Has a good ripple with that one. But no contact. Bob Allison has 24 home runs. He's a big fellow. 75 runs batted in. Wears those pants high. They try to keep the ball down on him. Watch that catcher. Kind of get an indication or they try to pitch a hitter sometime. Of course, he doesn't always hold true. Sometimes he holds that target inside, and the pitcher will pitch at his right knee. Giving the signs. A real fine pitch to Lombard, keeping that ball down and away on Allison. So Aliva and Bob Allison both looking at a third strike. That is the fifth strikeout for Lombard. Brings up Ted Uland to the center fielder. Fly it out to left and fly it out to center field. He's 0 for 2. Ulander batting 257. Ball hit off to the left. Back up in the stands. It makes the man very happy. End of the sixth inning, over Detroit. The Tigers lead the Angels by a score of six to two. Detroit must win both games to get in the playoff with the club that wins this game right here. There's a ball hit out into right field. Ken Harrelson underneath it and takes it for out number three. That's all for the Twins here in the top half of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. So the score after five and a half innings of play, it's still the Twins two, and the Red Sox nothing. What happens when a little water? Jim Lombard leading things off for the Red Sox. Dean <laughs> Chance is just ready to pitch, and Bob Allison is about 30 yards from his position in left field. Still walking to his position. And the umpire, Shalak, caught him. He punched one down the third baseline. They're going to have to hurry. If he's on board, gets himself another base hit. How about that? The Red Sox. Five hits. And the fellow putting on it. 
jacket down at first base has two up the pitcher. Now then the fans come alive as the pitcher starts things off with a base hit here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The Red Sox trail by a score of two to nothing. Jerry Adair, Killebrew, trying to get Dean Chance attention that he's going to be playing in back of the pitcher, Jim Lombard. He will not hold him on at first base. So much noise. Rod Carew, the second baseman, went in and told him. Adair, the last time up, hit into a double play with Lombard on at first. Jim taking a short lead. You can see Killebrew in back of him at first base. Ball right back to the middle. It's a base hit. Lombard, will he try to go to third? No, sir. He holds up as Uniter charges that ground ball. On at first base, Jerry Ida. The Red Sox has something going. Well, as Kurt mentioned a while ago, he said the fans have been kind of dead here today. Well, they're not dead now. Talking to his catcher, Jerry Zimmerman. Talking to Dean before the game, he had a telegram from his friend. They were very close friends, Rick Reichert over at California. They're playing in Detroit today, you know, and he says, Dean, good luck to you. You take care of the Red Sox, we'll take care of the Tigers. I will have to wait and see. Will Dick Williams sacrifice this situation. You can see Versailles holding him on. He punched the ball, Dalton Jones, off to the left. Don't be surprised if Dick Williams changes. There's Jerry Adair at first base, Jim Lundberg down at second. Warming up for the Twins, the big right-hander Al Worthington in the bullpen. Dick Williams may switch over and let Dalton Jones hit away. He did. He hit the ball right by Colbert out of the left field. Bob Allison charged that ground ball and held Jim Lundberg on at third base. <laughs> Al Armour coming out to talk to his pitcher, Dean Chan. Dick Williams, the manager of the Red Sox. You could just see Cal Armour tell Dean Chance, if that ball hit back to you, go home with it. And would you believe the base is loaded. The Red Sox trail by a score of two to nothing. Base is loaded. And who is the hitter? Carl Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski has a single and a double today. He takes the first pitch it's inside, ball one. This is the first serious trouble on at third base, Lombard. Second base, Adair. First base, Dalton Jones. This is the first trouble that Dean Chance has really been in today. The fans are going wild. The Srimsky base hit out into center field. That'll score two runs. Dalton Jones going to third. Here's Adair coming in to score the tying run. The throw came into second base. But the runners are on at first and third. Well, you saw that sign there. Bring on St. Louis. the hitter with 
runners on first and third, no one out. Ball outside. The infield is in, on at third base. Dalton Jones. Over at first base, Paul Yastinsky. Harrelson. Looking at a curveball, just got the outside corner. There's the pitch that he and George Scott is talking about. That slider, a curveball, getting that outside corner. Don't try to pull it. This game is all tied up as the Red Sox have come up with two big runs here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. A good sink of a chance. One ball and two strikes. This game is for all the marbles. They have been playing all year. And it's boiled down to one game. Way outside, two and two. Dean Chan. Looking for his 21st win of the year. On at third base, that's Dalton Jones. At first base, Paul Yastrzemski. No one out, and the Red Sox have two runs in. Jerry Zimmerman, the catcher. Baseball inside. Versailles, the shortstop, in the top to Dean Chance. Well, Dick Williams, the manager of the Red Sox, have Yastrzemski. Moving on his three and two pitch to stay out of the double play. Or will he let him stay there as Harrelson struck out a couple times yesterday? Does not want to be taken out of a big inning here. We'll wait and see. The count three and two on Ken Harrelson. There goes Jastrzemski. High hopper. That's a hurt. The size comes home with him. He has no chance. Take a look at this. That was a high hopper to Versailles. Watch this now. Ken Harrison chops this ball down in front of the plate. Look at that. A real high hopper, and Versailles likes to go home with the ball, and he surprised everyone, and everyone is safe. He had only one man he could have uh, gotten there, Pee Wee, and that was Harrison at first. Stemsky was already in the second, as you fans saw. The Twins made mistakes yesterday and gave up about four runs to the Red Sox. And right now, a new pitcher coming on. That's all for chance. They'll score that one a fielder's choice. New pitcher, Al Worthington. Number 43, the manager of the Twins. Well, there's a break in the action here at Fenway Park. The score, Boston 3, Minnesota 2. In a few hours, this plane will be filled with secretaries, families, and businessmen, all starting on the shrimp cocktail at 600 miles per hour. The jet age. But to American Airlines, there's more to flying than a glamorous lunch seven miles in the sky. In this room is the largest business computer in the world. Just to make sure of your reservation. The menu you want 
your fare plan, your connecting airlines, and whether you want a rental car waiting. Forty million dollars to keep you from getting the lobster if you ask for a roast beef sandwich. We built American with a professional traveler in mind. For old hands like this, you don't run an airline on glamour alone. Al Worthen. Al Worthington has completed his warm-up pitches. The hitter is Dark Scott. We have a runner for Ken Harrelson at first base in Jose Tartabal. That will kind of set the scene for you. We're in the bottom half of six innings, still no one out. The Red Sox have come up with three runs to go ahead in this ball game by a score of three to two. We have runners on first and second. Still no one out. And they have big George the Great Scott. Cut the cellar the shortstop wants to talk to him. Well, Dick Williams. Punt Yastrzemski and tar the ball over. Or we let the big Scott swing away as he calls for. I believe he calls it a tater, doesn't he, Kurt? A long tater. He calls a home run. A long tater. There's Dick Williams. Manager of the Red Sox. Al Worthington. Taking over for Dean Chan. The ball gets away from Jerry Zimmerman. Going to third, Paul Yastrzemski. Down to second, Jose Cardiball. Worthington, the first pitch to George Scott. He squared around like he was going to bunny. He doesn't have to worry about it now. Has some action in both bullpens. Jeff Brent and Rowan warming up for the Twins. John Wyatt and Brett warming up for the Red Sox. Cardiball at second. Gestripski at third. George Scott the hitter. Her ball in there. Call strike. One ball and one strike. Worthington has been around for quite a long time. That was a wild pitch chopped up against Al. Her ball. Spun on and missed. Tigers are leading California over Detroit by a score of six to two after seven at third base. Yastrzemski at second base. Part of ball. Score over Detroit is now six to four. California has come up with two. Ball gets away from Zimmerman. Yastrzemski comes in to score. Moving over to third is part of ball. He comes in to score the fourth run in this inning. And the fourth run in the ball game for the Boston Red Sox. And the Twins right now, let's face it, they are not playing good ball. And the Red Sox have been taking advantage of it the last two days. George Scott goes fishing for a wide sweeping curve. Strikes him out. Over at Detroit. Don Mitcher. I believe that's his second home run of the game. Hit a home run in the sixth inning with a man on and the score, as I told you now, six to four. coming in the pitch for the Detroit Tigers. You know, Sparma started that game. The Tigers blew a 6-2 lead last night in that second game of the doubleheader in the eighth inning they were leading. Petroselli is the hitter.
looking for a squeeze play there. You can see Zimmerman and Al Worthington pitch out on at third base. That's Tartable. Keep an eye on him. They may try to squeeze him. Petroselli takes that pitch inside ball two. The infield is in. Third base and short stuff you can see on the screen in the second baseman. Count two and oh. Tartable with a sharp lead at third base. Three and oh. Worthington came in to relieve Dean Chance, made two wild pitches that hurt a little bit. Tartaball up the line, and Petroselli got the green light on a 3 0 pitch. Makes the count 3 1. Petroselli 1 for 2. Got a base hit in the second inning. Tartaball edges off of that bag. Let's see, here comes early win. He's the pitching coach for Cal Armour, the Minnesota Twins. Gonna have a little huddle on the mound. Quite a pitcher. He won 300 games, didn't he? Yes, sir. One of the best in the history of the American League. Started with the Senators, the Indians. White Sox back to the Indians again. Early, early win. Let's take a look now. There he is. One of the great ones. Take a look at the infield now for the Twins. I don't imagine they'll be back at double play depth. But Reggie Smith needed to be a hard man to double. Now Rod Carew is playing in. Try to cut this one off at home. Worthington down low in the dirt again. But Zimmerman blocked this one. Tartable at third. First base. Rico Petrocelli. Reggie Smith with that close stance of his. He's a switch hitter. Foul tip. One ball, one strike. It's getting a little dark here. A little overcast. This game is official now. We're in the sixth inning. Tartable leads off a third. Takes the pitch, it's too low. Don't be surprised. There's Al Worthington. Don't be surprised if Reggie Smith gets on. We may see a pinch hitter for Russ Gibson. The fair ball hits Killebrew in the knee. And Tartable comes in to score the fifth run in this inning. That was a line shot by Reggie Smith. Killebrew tries to block the ball. He did block it, hit him in the knee, and bounced too far away from him to get Reggie Smith. There's Harmon going back to his position. And we're going to have a pinch hitter for Russ Gibson. It'll be Norm Seaburn. And Killebrew gets an arrow on that last ball hit by Reggie Smith. And has this been a big inning for the Red Sox? Still only one out. It was all started by a pitcher the name of Jim Lombard, who has two hits in this game. He bunted one down the third baseline and beat it out. Norm Seaburn batting for Russ Gibson. Elson Howard over the dugout putting on the shin guards, the catching equipment, he'll be the new catcher. 
Runners on first and second. In there, call strike one. Sebring batting 178. He originally came up with the Yankees. He went to Kansas City in the Roger Maris deal. Roger Maris came to the Yankees. Seaman went to Kansas City. One by one strike on Seaman. Worthington has been wow. Low and outside. The one and one pitch. Seabird. Kind of uppercut at that ball. At second base. Petroselli in first base, Reggie Smith. Time is called by Nestor Shylock. Still only one away. Five runs in by the Red Sox here. They lead five to two in this ball game. Low and outside. Dallas two and two. The next hitter will be Jim Lombard. He may get a chance to get two hits in one inning. And Reggie Smith. The count is three and two. They may be running with the pitch. With one away. To try to stay out of that double play. Watch Petroselli at the top of your screen there. See if he goes. taking too much of a lead. If they strike him out, he'll have a good shot at throwing him out at third. There he goes. Ball hit out to Rod Carew. Only play to Killebrew at first base. So they get two away and brings up Jim Lombard. The pitcher, he'll get quite a hand. two hits today. He's kind of settled down since the start of this game. It looks like it may be a little rough the rest of the way in. As Kurt told you, this fellow is not a bad hitter. He's won some important games with his hit. After seven and a half innings, at the end of seven, Pops one up. Rod Drew takes it for the final out. But not before. The Red Sox score five runs on four hits, one hand, two men left on base. So after six full innings, Red Sox five, Minnesota two. Pitches, there's two base hits, and both of them off gloves. Carl Yastrzemski is finishing up the season in championship fashion. He's had three for three today. He's knocked in two runs. Leads the league in batting, RBIs, tied for the lead in home runs. Frank Robinson, a triple crown winner last year, 10 years before we had one. From Mantle, 56 to Robinson last year. All run. Yastrzemski is now hitting 325. 
Raised his average three points in this game. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. Red Sox ahead. Five to two. Last of the seven. All two. The Red Sox have not won a pennant since 1946. They've had the stars here. Tom Yockey has spent the money. He's done everything to get a winner. But the last five years, the Red Sox have been a lowly second division ball club. And suddenly, everything fell into place this season. The 2-0 pitch. Curveball hit in the air to right field. Third, four pitch in a row. They're holding a dare up. Jastrzemski is now four for four in the game. Kurt, he's not only made a believer out of Sal Magna, he's made a believer out of Pee Wee. I believe he is some kind of a ball player. Well, he's the old man on the ball club. He's 27 years old. Cal Ermer walking out. Jose Sardabol will be the next batter. And Ermer was wondering, what can I do? The game is all over in Detroit. The Tigers have won the first game 6-4. to four. And now, the Tigers, if they win the second game, will tie the winner of this game for the pennant. If. Jim Grant's been warming up out there in the twin bullpen. And also Hernandez. Red Sox now has slashed out 11 hits in this game. The two for the twins. Skrzemski, by the way, after his fourth consecutive hit, is now hitting 326. Jim Grant, who just uh, two years ago was a 20-game winner. Had a bad knee that's bothered him. Well, the Red Sox had five hits in a row to start off the six without anybody going out. Now they've had three hits in a row here in the last of the seven. They sting the ball. Gowdy, Pee Wee Reese, and Sandy Koufax again. There's the final of the Tigers and Angels in their first game. Six to four Tigers. They'll be starting in about 20 minutes from now, the second game at Tiger Stadium, Detroit. And the cities of Boston and Minnesota, or one of the cities, and the fans of that city's major league team across America will be Sitting and standing by, waiting to see what finally happens this evening. And who's going to represent the American League. Jose Tartable hits it down to Killebrew. He comes home with it. Go back to first, and they've got a double play. Three to two to three. That makes it two down. It's runners on second and third. The batter is George Scott. long when you double Tartable up you're doubling a man up who can run the hundred and around nine six George Scott gone over for three runners on second and third two down Grant's in there with a strike Jones at third, Carl Gostrzemski at second. Now back at strike two to George Scott. The Twins in their eighth inning will have the top of the order up, Rezaiz, Tovar, and Killebrew. Jim Grant won five and lost six. This is his 27th appearance. Feels straight away for Scott. Struck him out. Grant did a great job in relief. Coming in with the bases loaded, nobody out, and getting the Twins out of that jam. In the seventh, the Red Sox had no runs, three hits, 
There are no errors and two men left. And at the end of seven, it's the Red Sox five and the Twins two. Great job. Makes it two down, runners on first and second, and Bob Ellison up. Flying out, struck out twice, 0 for 3. Playing Ellison deep and over toward left. He's got a base hit, that ball's headed out in the corner. Gillibrew's coming in to score. Oliva's going to third. The throw comes to second. And uh, no. they got him at second base. Bob Allison trying to go in there. He's going out. And the rally is in there. They were two runs behind when he went in there. Oliva's at third. And he stands there wondering what happened. inning. We'll recap it later. The score, Boston 5 and Minnesota 3. Recapping the eighth again, Ellison singled. Killebrew scored. Ellison tried to go for two, was thrown out as Oliva was standing on third. Now let's go to Tiger Stadium in Detroit for an audio update from Jim Simpson. All right, Kurt, and as you've already said, Detroit won this important game 6-4, to four, and perhaps the man of the hour in the late innings was Fred Gladding, who came out of the bullpen, faced seven men over the last two innings and retired six of them to save the win for Joe Sparma. And Eddie Matthews had a two-run single. Willie Horton scored three times, had a two-run home run, and now it's all up to the last game, and the pitchers are already warming up. Danny McLean for Detroit. Rich Clark for the Angels as we go back to Kurt Gowdy in Boston. Thank you, Jim Simpson. Last of the eighth inning, Rico Petroselli. We're going to have to recap this for you with all our switching back and forth. Petroselli fouls it back. Rico has single, fly it out, and walk. One out of two. Well, the Twins had four hits there in the eighth inning and got one run. Reese single, then Tovar hit into a double play. Killebrew single, Oliva single. The ball, Allison hit that ball into the left field corner. Killebrew scored, Oliva went to third, and Allison tried to go to second and was thrown out by Carl Yastrzemski. He has a deadly throwing arm. He's been throwing runners out ever since he came into the league. Bounding ball to third is fair. Tovar plays it across in time, and there's one down. Allison had held first. Oliva would have been on third. The tying runs would have been on, and Ulander would have been the batter. There are the standings right now. This is a three-way tie as of right now. It's going to change when this one's over. Reggie Smith has struck out, fouled out, reached in an error. Ball one to him from Jim Grant. Rich Reese is in left field now for the Twins. Jackie Hernandez is at short. 2-0 and oh to Reggie Smith. Elston Howard on deck for the Red Sox. Five to three, Red Sox leading, last of the eight. Foul back on the counts, two and one. Again, 35,770 is the crowd here today. They, they just couldn't put another person in here. And the Red Sox final home attendance, 1,793,846. The all-time home record. 
In a ballpark that seats, they nearly drew two million here in a ballpark that seats 33,000. Two and two. Fans are still buzzing about the top of the eighth when the Twins had four hits and got one run. Now back on the count, two and two to Reggie Smith. The Twins' last chance in the ninth inning. They'll have Ulander to lead it off. Carew and Nixon. Gary Bell. Gary Wozluski are warming up in the Red Sox bullpen in case Lombard runs into trouble. Foul back again, the count two and two to Reggie Smith. Hits sharply to Grant. Two down, and uh, Elston Howard up for the first time. Here's a replay of this big play of Bob Allison here in the eighth inning. Now there's a ball hit into the left field corner. Yastrzemski is chasing it down. Killebrew has scored the third run for the Twins. They'll leave us to third, and as you saw, Yastrzemski fired into Mike Andrews. They had the ball waiting for Allison as he slid into second. That was the third out. Elston Howard. on. Lombard will be up. He'll get a big hand. Standing ovation for talking about Yastrzemski earlier. Pee Wee told you what Sal Magley said. He's played on championship teams. He's never seen a player have an all-around year like Yastrzemski has this year. Ball to everybody looks at his home runs and his RBIs and his batting average. But unless you watch him play, you don't know how good defensively he is. And he just showed you by making that unbelievable throw out of the left field corner to nail Allison trying to go to second. Against an ordinary left fielder, Allison would have been in there easily with a double. Two balls, no strikes. Ground ball, a shortstop. Hernandez over to Carew for the force, and we're going to the ninth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of the eighth inning, the Red Sox five and the Twins three. anywhere. It's his day for Dodge Fever. Sox, three runs, six hits, one error for the Twins. 
If the Red Sox hold on to this lead, they will be the American League champs if the Tigers lose their second game. If the Tigers win the second game, and the Red Sox win this one, there'd be a tie, and a playoff would start in Boston tomorrow. If the Twins rally and win it, and the Tigers win the second game, there would be a tie, and the playoff would start in Bloomington, Minnesota, tomorrow. Well, they're down to the last inning of the year for these two clubs, unless they're the playoff. The strike. Another left-hander on deck. And then a left-handed hitting catcher, Nixon. Ball one, strike one. John Wyatt, a right-hander. Ken Brett, a left-hander, warming up in the Red Sox bullpen. Ground ball to Petroselli. Takes a bad hop, hits him in the neck for the face. And Ulander's off. And the Twins now will bring the tying run to the plate. Let's see about Petroselli. That reminds you of the bad hop in the seventh game of the World Series in Pittsburgh when Tony Kubek was struck in the neck. Playing shortstop for the Yankees. Petroselli's all right. On a possible double play ball then. Dick Williams. Now talking to him. Buddy LaRue, the trainer. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was a seventh chance for Petroselli in the game. Like it came up and hit him in the mouth or the cheek. Well, that's a base hit for you, Lander. Petroselli stays in, gets a hand from the back. Carew, the rookie, has grounded out three times to the infield. Rounding ball to second. Andrews tags him, throws, double play. double play in the eighth inning. That was started by Jerry Adair, who was spiked and had to leave the game. Rookie Mike Andrews goes in and pulls off the same play. One more out, and the Red Sox have clinched at least a tie for the pennant. Rich Rollins is going to bat now. Rich Rollins. The last hope for the Twins. He's on deck to bat just in case. Fans are yelling, we want an out. There's a little bloop. Petroselli's there. The Red Sox are winning. The Red Sox have clinched the tie for the pennant. And it could be the winner if the Tigers lose the second game. Look at the scene in Boston. They've waited since 1946. valuable piece of property there the Pander have taken over I hope they don't uh, hurt him Jim Lombard pitched a big ball game here today his 22nd win of the year to bring the Red Sox at least to tie and now they'll go to their clubhouse Pee Wee and Sandy and stand by to see what happens to the Tigers one thing for sure the Red Sox will not leave town tomorrow. They'll either play a playoff game tomorrow or they'll stand here till Wednesday and wait for the Cardinals to come in for the World Series. The final score, the Red Sox, five runs, 12 hits and two errors. The Minnesota Twins, three runs, seven hits and one error.